I've always been a cat person. I've had cats since I was a little child. I'd say that our obsession with them is reaching a crescendo. Mom! What? Are you hungry? You want some num-nums? Yeah. We cohabitate with cats in this really intense way. We know more about them, we wonder more, and that just feeds this love that we have. I think it's fair to say that we are obsessed and they are not. Humans never really decided, hey, we're gonna domesticate cats. Cats domesticated themselves. It started off just that cats were scavengers in our first settlements. The most fearless survived and had more babies and ate more meat. And they became what we consider domesticated animals today. Humans have gotten tame dogs and pigs, say, by breeding the friendliest animals with each other and getting more and more malleable animals. The interesting thing about cats, though, is that they undertook these changes on their own. The way some scientists think about it is that they went through the process of artificial selection, but they did it naturally. Cats are these amazing, adaptable, high-performance hunters that can survive anywhere from Arctic islands to Hawaiian volcanoes, but humans also have a weakness for these animals. Cats have infant features that we're attracted to. Large round heads and large eyes and sort of big looking cheeks. They weigh about maybe eight pounds or so, just the size of a human newborn. And they have a cry that can sort of resemble the wail of a baby. In nature, these cats are very quiet animals. They hardly ever meow. It's when they realize how susceptible we are to what they say, that's when they start to speak. I think you can see our relationship with cats as a series of cat-controlled takeovers. In Egypt, sort of the first cat-obsessed society, all of these funerary frescoes and statues and kind of worshipping them at a certain point. From there, cats got on our ships and wherever we went, they went too. The Vikings took a liking to orange cats, and you can trace the pathways of the Vikings by looking to see where there are lots of orange cats. The global population of house cats is difficult to tally, but scientists think something like half a billion, maybe even a billion. There's countries in South America where the population of pet cats might be growing by a million cats per year, say. No matter what we do, we're never gonna get control over these animals or make any but the smallest dent on the global cat population. They took over our bodies in terms of this very mysterious cat parasite, Toxoplasmosis gondii, that they've spread to one in three people on the planet, and scientists are sort of looking at how that might alter human behavior. Some people think that toxoplasmosis may be one of the causes underlying schizophrenia. There are interesting studies in rats that suggest that rats infected with toxoplasmosis lose their fear of cats. The favorite newspaper phrase is fatal feline attraction because then if you lose your fear of the smell of cats you're more likely to be eaten. And some people have speculated that you know hey, if I have this parasite, you know, maybe I'm becoming attracted to cats as well. To me, what's the most interesting is that we as humans have to build this narrative where we're like, okay, I actually have a physical disease that is making me obsessed with my cat. And it may be true. Of course, they've taken over our modern homes and apartment buildings, and last of all, taken over the internet. People for a long time have tried very hard to capture images of cats. I think that there's sort of particular features of felines that play really well online, that sudden jump, sort of pounce, ambush behavior. It's just good for that 10 second clip of something crazy happens. It's like, okay, my cat freaked out and, you know, jumped on a vacuum or away from a cucumber. <laughs>
there's the fact that we love to look at cat faces and the fact that they look so human to us but are blank in a way that human faces aren't. It's open for captioning. It can reflect whatever we want it to say. Only 2% of the cats on the planet are purebred or pedigreed cats. However, as there are more and more cats on the planet, more and more sort of weird mutations crop up. And I visited these very nice veterinarians who were breeding this kind of cat called the Lycoy or werewolf cat, which favors a mutation for partial hairlessness and looks a little bit like a werewolf. <laughs> Another interesting trend that's been going on in cat breeding is the mixing of domestic cats with other small cats like the Asian leopard cat. And often these cats have a temperament to match their wild looks and a lot of them end up sadly in shelters and even big cat shelters. I think our obsession with cats shows how much we can connect still with animals and how much we want to give and can give. Mom! Mommy! At the same time, I think that the way we see them is these sort of little fur dolls, basically, or these internet stars kind of speaks to our nature of humans to sort of pretend that these animals are doing our bidding when actually they have wormed their way into every niche on the planet practically and run roughshod over us in a lot of ways. You know, when you look down at your cat, don't say, oh, there's a fur baby, say, oh, there's a hyper carnivore. And I think that that will only increase your appreciation for cats to sort of know the journey that they've undergone and the odds that they've beat to come and sit on your lap.